Matt, does it feel nice that I didn't ask you if you did it? Yeah, it does. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know my fingers now, so, you know. <laughs> you have that <laughs> knowledge of my fingers. And we can introduce Everyone a lot of people to your fingers. Everyone has knowledge of your fingers. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah. so, so, Chris, how was your spell in prison? My spell in prison was uh, derogatory and full of sighs. But uh, quite pleasant, actually, considering yeah. what I did. Yeah, me did, and Matt, did... we just realised we'd been really depressing for the past few weeks. Oh, and no. this Yeah, this podcast is comedy, so we just had to bust you out. Well... So I, so I did the whole prison break thing and got a full body tattoo and then got myself arrested, but then I realised I'd be going to a women's prison. I thought that was you. I, thought, I was no, at a I women's prison. You. What were you doing at a women's prison, Chris? Well, I got into the wrong van. Um, <laughs> but I thought I saw you for a split second. I appreciate the sentiment. But, yeah, we both fucked up there. <laughs> yeah. I had you to just fucked out up the right way. in the sewer. And then we had to go and get Matt to retrieve you. But I got photographic memory, so I memorised your back. And, um, yeah, it, it, <laughs> funny enough, all these prison systems are quite in the similarly layered. So, yeah, I managed to break out somehow and uh here i am i'm doing a podcast now with you guys i probably shouldn't be here but hey <laughs> i think you'll probably end up getting arrested again re-arrested again in a couple of weeks give or take i think oh they'll never probably. find me and, and then you'll be away for like a week or so maybe more yeah It'll be so you said in this podcast as well mm, it's like dick dastardly like, i'm here one week gone again the no- another and i'll be like come get me again it's a game with me and then you know it's <laughs> They can try, and sometimes they succeed, but they know deep in their hearts, I'll be out again, running about Eventually. naked. Uh, you, yeah, you left the two people that are into murder alone to run a podcast. Yes, mm. and I how was hoping how, you'd how? be talking about my murders, but oh well. Nah, we're going to save that till you're strapped to that chair, Oh, about to get you, yourself burnt. You, you teases. <laughs> you, <laughs> you are... So it, sorry, you've got to keep down on like, the kinky stuff, yeah? <laughs> We're we'll trying to make this more normal <laughs> podcast. Okay, I'll try. Anyway, right. Chris, did you drop the soap? I tried <laughs> plenty of times, sometimes deliberately. Oh. <laughs> sometimes I slapped it out of someone else's hands and watched the fireworks. But, um, <laughs> no, so, uh, to be fair, yeah. it, was, it was quite a rough time. So basically, uh, so Chris, you were receiving, not giving. Oh, a bit of both. <laughs> <laughs> did you share a cell with a guy named Tiny? That was uh, massive. Tiny, gigantous. And uh, Philip. But to be fair, um, sometimes we'd, have, we'd make a bit of fun out of it. Oh, no, 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 Schofield. No, no, no. There was one that was Schofield like, but we called him Mousy. We made a game out of it. Sometimes we'd drop the soap, but be wearing an extra strong pair of towels to give it a bit of a game. See, see, change the game up a bit. See how they would react, you know. Uh, it always ended the same way. But anyway, what are we talking about today? Well, we've had a few heavy weeks, so we decided to go easy and do OCD. Oh, OCDs. My faves. But what is it time for? Intro music. Oh. Yeah, by the way, Chris, I've got a Matt to start doing intro music and he keeps screaming it. <laughs> I like They're that. They're literally just screaming it every single episode, blasting I, my earphones out. I like that. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to whisper it next time, though. But yes. then we might be able to hear you. Into your ear. <laughs> <laughs> the listeners won't be able to hear you. Seductively. <laughs> <laughs> Matt, I beg of you, don't. I beg of you, please don't. Do it like Barry White. Do it like um, the sweet sounds. Of... <laughs> I've got the backing music for that. Check a wow. Intro music. <laughs> 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 Where we talk about stuff. I forgot what we're talking about now. <laughs> oh, how was your day anyway? Uh, it was all right. I found catastrophe on um, Amazon Instant Video. Mm. Oh, Chris, you don't know. I've got a TV in my bedroom now. Shut up. And I've got one of those fire sticks that I can just plug in so I can get onto Netflix and instant video and not like have to connect anything. Some sort it's of really dongle. good. It's like, what? That like some sort of dongle. Sort of, yeah. But it's really good because it's like having a smart TV, but I, didn't, I had to pay 35 quid. Ooh, I didn't nice. even have to pay for the TV. It's brilliant. And you have a VHS player as well. Uh, if only. <sighs> but that would be, the, that would be life. Mm. No, that's life, having a VHS tape, VC- VCR, not a VHS tape. Finally, you can use those bricks. I've actually been watching my DVDs. Me too, actually. 
I've been watching some of the DVDs you brought me, Tommy. The porn? Oh, oh, those ones? No, no, no. <laughs> I've kept them under the bed. <laughs> I don't even remember what DVDs I got you. I bought, I bought you, buy you some over like mass periods of time. So by the time it gets to giving it to you, I never remember what I've got you. I've been watching Unit One with uh, what's his face in it. You know Hannibal. Yeah, you actually got Unit Mads One. Mikkelsen. I wanted to get that for myself. I didn't get oh, that gosh. for you, did I? Did, oh, did I get that for myself? Yeah, I didn't get that for you. I got you um, something else. The wedding, the wedding one with Hannibal. All oh, right, I must have got it for myself. But I, yeah, I wanted to get Unit One for myself. <laughs> oh. Thanks for reminding me. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, no, it looks it, it looks a bit old because it is like two thousand. Yeah, so. anything like stuff that was made like a couple of years ago still looks a bit old. Yeah, it's weird that. It's because of HD as well. It sucks. Mm. Have you tried to watch something from that in the eighties or nineties or even earlier than that on HD TV? It's awful. It ruins it for you. Ah, uh, American yeah. Pie: The Wedding still holds up. I yeah, seen. I think I've grown out of American Pie. Oh, you can. Well, oh, I, I guess I'm just immature then. No, it's still it's still funny. It's still hilarious to me. It reminds me of a simpler time when tits and dicks were the epitome of uh, comedy. Yeah. I like <laughs> pie, though. You like pie, Rich? Yeah. No, I like pie. Pie, okay. Mm. Still like pie. That's Matt's input on American yeah. Pie. I like pie. <laughs> Even yeah, after you... that scene, you like pie? Well, you know, you need something to go with it. <laughs> you need to, you know, some kind of sauce. <laughs> A little bit of creme fraiche. <laughs> yeah. Some people like, you know, cream. Other people like custard. Well, technically, I, I guess like that could be cream, could not it? Creme brulee, apparently. Hang on. Who was the sperminator? Or Shermanator. Sperm Shermanator was the ginger one. Oh, here we was go. Was sperm donator? <laughs> You're the sperm donator, yeah. Yeah, so there you go. That's, that's, so that's what I like with my pie. So basically, you are like the Shermanator. Really? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Do you not remember who the Shermanator is? No. He's the one that becomes successful in the He's future. The, he was the geeky ginger kid. Oh, God, I'm not ginger. Who is that? Poor Freddy. <laughs> I mean, no offence to Freddy, but I just I wouldn't want to be ginger myself. It, I mean, it's fine for other people to be, but <laughs> for myself, no way. Jose. Yeah, I don't think I, I, I ended up ginger by mistake once. I'd rather drown myself. <laughs> yeah, it was an accident. I wasn't, it wasn't supposed to come out ginger, but then it came out ginger. So I was ginger for a while before I could re-dye it, because you have to leave it for a while. You can't dye it again yeah. straight away. That must have been a traumatic time for you, Tom. It was my first hair dyeing experience. <laughs> yeah, I still carried on dyeing my hair for two years. <laughs> okay. Anyway, I, I, was, I was researching something for later on. And there's this article that I saw. I didn't go on it, but I was really tempted. And the headline is, Bikini babes didn't expect this when they got on the trampoline. <laughs> Send that to Chris. That's what he's thinking. Hey, yeah. that sounds good. Oh, hey, hey, yeah, forward that to me. Yeah, I, I really actually want to find out what that's about. Because I like bikinis, I like babes, and I like trampolines. So I hope it's not like some clickbait and then you click on it and it's like, Six pack shortcuts or something like that. Yeah, uh, it probably is clickbait. Oh, I hate clickbait. I really yeah. hate clickbait. You want to? Yeah. Do you want to hear something surprising about this podcast? Oh yes. Yeah, because I've have been looking at, No, no, no. I've been looking at our stats recently, and the most popular episodes are reptilian humanoids and Alyssa Lamb. Uh-huh. And then I realised those two are not similar at all. One's about a conspiracy theory. One's about a murder mystery sort of thing but then i realized there is one thing in common those episodes have and that's matt yes is matt the popular one yes well matt, i'm gonna be humble about this and say yes <laughs> I, matt. I, I find that shocking matt's the nicest guy on our podcast <laughs> really? Fuck you, Tarvin. You find that shocking? <laughs> no, Chris, you, Chris, you've been in prison for the past couple of months. Oh, yes. yes. I've had to deal with this. I, I, I've been listening. <laughs> <laughs> they allow me a bit of air time every now and then to catch Matt up Matt tried the to news. kill the Queen. No, oh, that was Tarvin. That, that was not co- me, that was you. That was, that was, no, no, I have evidence that you <laughs> wanted to kill the Queen. <laughs> I have the outtakes. You wanted to kill a lot more than the Queen. I did not. You were the one that was planning on doing it. I planned on nothing. No such thing. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. Tarmin's evil, so... Mm, yeah, oh, yeah, that's, that's, that's why right. I might end yeah. up in prison when you're doing the Loch Ness one, if that ever goes out. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, the topic for this week... OCD, 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 OCD. <laughs> 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 we 
you shouldn't <laughs> laugh because it's a problem for some people. So, Matt, right, so... what are your OCDs? <laughs> Oh, yeah, go to the one that hasn't got any first. <laughs> I, can't, I can't believe Idiot. you don't have any o- OCDs. Any rituals? Okay. My only, like, really kind of big OCD thing is sometimes with, like, collecting DVDs. Oh. Because I like to categorise my DVDs. I will sometimes buy the same DD- DVD twice. Not often. It is sometimes, though. Is it because, like, the DVD, the second DVD has spe- set different special features? Because that's why I do that. Not always. <laughs> oh, okay. I, it's, I, sometimes, I, it's just because I like, you know, if I like a particular filmmaker. Oh, it's I like, like a support for them. Yeah. Okay. I put it in there. So if it's, like, it's either a particular filmmaker or, like, I'm collecting country of films, like French films or something like that, I'll sometimes get the same DVD twice. It's the is only it, thing that Is it to I keep really an even do. number or...? No, not really. I don't. It's just some weird thing that I have. If I like categorising it, I have to have all the ones in that kind of category. And that sometimes means I'll buy a DVD I've already got that's in another category, if you know what, what? I mean. Okay. You mean like a genre, so you separate yeah. them by genre? Yeah, so, so for example, if I was buying a particular filmmaker's work and then I was getting, I was collecting like French films. Oh, and then if there's any crossover, so you get, I, I, you get two get, of them. Yeah, get so two there's of one them. in each section. Yeah, oh, I get so that. I, that, that each... seems reasonable to me. Mm. Do you want to know what I do with my DVDs? Yeah. <laughs> no, you both know what really. I do with my DVDs. <laughs> we don't want to know where you put them. <laughs> I put them... I have a bookshelf, a big bookshelf, that has, like, almost zero books on it now at this point. It's all full of DVDs, and that's oh. spilled over to my table. I've got, I've got three in my, I've got three bookshelves in my house with DVDs on them. No, no, but that's spilled over to my tables. Oh. <laughs> but, but they are still in A to Z. Oh, right. They're still oh, nice. in A to Z, no matter where they are. Oh shit! You actually, that's quite cool. Eh? You actually categorise them in A to Z. Yeah, yeah. Chris, you didn't let me finish. Oh, go on. <laughs> They're still in A to Z, and there's also a spreadsheet I have oh. with the DVDs. The year they were, the, whether they're film or TV or documentary or whatever, the year they were released, the director or creator, Fuck the me. genre, the genre, and the region of the DVDs, because I used to have a multi region player, so I had a few different regions. And I've also started another column with starring. Okay, now, let tell, me. Me, now, now tell me she doesn't deserve to be in prison. <laughs> Come on. So, so you start that off with a very... Oh, no, uh, no, also, I also have another section of where they are, so if they're on the shelf or they're with someone else. So that's how I know <laughs> how you still have Supernatural. <laughs> since oh you've had it since God. May, I think. So you've just, had it for five months. So my name is somewhere in this massive spreadsheet <laughs> with a red yeah, mark and, and saying, get And you had EVA for six months as well. I've got a log of that. <laughs> and Matt has quite a few as well. Oh, and Yulia has are. one. It's a useful system. And one's but missing from 2008. Who's got that one? My uncle took it and never returned it, and I actually searched his house, but I couldn't find it. So, <laughs> so from 2008, so to, it's been missing. You had to purge the, the category. No, no, it's still there, but it just says it's missing. So have you got a contract out on him now, then? Yeah, pretty much. Is I'm he, also, like, fearing I've his also, life? I also <laughs> keep the one, keep old stuff like I've sold or given away or whatever in the spreadsheet, but I black them out. Oh. So it's quite interesting because you've got like a record of everything you've owned. Yeah. I was thinking about doing that with my clothes as well. That's quite clever. You, you actually sound like my dad, Tarman. Thanks. Thank <laughs> you. Your dad, the I Mason. Th- I, think, I think you could be the same person. <laughs> then that's why I keep bringing them into our podcast. <laughs> yeah. You, well, you do. You do both used to live in Islington, so. Yeah, it's true. That, <laughs> that's that, that means we're one in the same because he's he was what like seventy odd when he passed away. Yeah. And um, I'm twenty three <coughs> and Asian, and a woman. Yeah. I admit uh, it's a bit of a leap, <laughs> kind of, but it could easily happen. I I didn't never actually saw his body. That, that's getting a bit dark there, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> you always find a way back. You always find I a way. I was intending on saying that when we started, but you brought him up. No, kind you of. did. You said yeah. that I remind you of your dad. You brought him up. Yeah, well, because you, you remind me of him. So you, it's your fault. <laughs> my fault. <laughs> yes, it is. Stop reminding me of my dad. I'm trying to forget him. Just by <laughs> being. You what? <laughs> just, yeah, just, just her being, being is reminding you like it. It. Yeah. Just You're standing there, you remind me. <laughs> yeah. So, Chris, Stop what it. what DVD ritual do you have? Bef- I'll just say this now before I say anything. Don't treat me any differently. I'm still the same guy. 
but I do kind of have a few rituals I've had all my life. I have got quite a few. DVD was just the first one. Yeah, yeah I'm like a big <laughs> wobbly OCD ball, and if you prick me, all these OCD spiders come out. I it's, cry it's, sometimes because of mine. <laughs> so I, I, my one, one of the biggest ones that's ruled my life uh, ever since I was a kid. I've, I've kind of gotten ahead of it now in the past couple of years, but I had to do things a set amount of times, and the numbers will always change. Like sometimes uh, seven would be a lucky number, or sometimes anything even would be fine. But uh, like turning the light on and off, or going in and out of a room with the right foot. <laughs> Um, I don't know, it's hard to explain Uh, Even simple things like If I travel a certain way to school uh, I would have to go exactly the same way back I I don't know why It's just uh, It was a ritual thing that I had Um, Otherwise I I would just feel like Because if I travel a certain way to somewhere I travel the opposite way As in a different way on the way back So it's going in a circle That's a lot easier (laughs) (laughs) Because if I tried to get back it would sometimes mean having to take the long way because obviously you can't always go the same way back if you get the same train or something. If I didn't, I would always feel like there was an unlucky aura going around or something. I'm not even a spiritual person, but I don't. It's hard to rationalise, I suppose. Um, even every now and then, like people might not even notice it, but I'll make grunts like mm, mm, like that. No, because no, I have Chris, to, we notice. We notice. You've noticed that. That's, <laughs> I've, 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 heard, I've an, heard you grunting, Chris. Yeah, yeah, so I have to do it an even number of times because uh, it's just that small ritual again it's all over my you know it's all in my life so yeah i kind of so you don't have anything specific (laughs) not specific just lots (laughs) i have lots as well oh god like it's editing editing of the podcast Mm. do you want to know why it doesn't actually take me that long to do it go on because when i'm editing and then i look at how much i've edited Edited. I can only stop at like a five minute mark. So it's like five, ten, fifteen, twenty, twenty five, thirty, whatever. Mm-hmm. But, and so when I get to that, it's fine. But then I look at the actual time, and it's like six twenty two. Uh-huh. I've got three minutes to kill before I can stop doing this. So yeah. I start editing more, and then obviously I'm not at a five minute mark. So it keeps going and going and going until I hit a five minute mark on both the the edit and the time, or until I finish. Ah, uh, yeah. And it's pains that, that's why you get messages from me for like at like three in the morning because that's when I finished because <laughs> I couldn't stop doing it <laughs> like physically couldn't do it, stop. Oh man, yeah, that, it, it controls your life a bit, doesn't it? Yeah, or like yeah. the fucking microwave, the fucking microwave. Yeah, I can only stop it at like a ten second mark, so it'll be like ten, twenty, thirty, forty, fifty, sixty. I understand that. <clears throat> yeah. No, 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 no. But it can't go to zero. No, it no. can't go to zero. And I could hear it burning in there, but I can't take it out early. It has to be at a 10-second mark. Mm. That's that's debilitating, because I'm sitting there watching it burn, and I can't do anything about it. It's, it's just it's like a rush, isn't it? Because you have to wait for that, that those couple of seconds before it gets to that point, and then, then you can allow yourself to take it out. And mm. it's yeah, Regardless of the end product, or it's the same with, like, if I've got my MP3 on, I have to change the song before it ends. Or, or little things like that. Just, I don't know what it is. It's, it's hard to explain. And there's no rules to this shit. You know, you make your own rules up in your head, you know, as fucked up as we are. But um, it's, it's just, that's OCD. I, and, and these are, you know, could, to be honest, though, these are very mild forms compared yeah, to what some people some have. Yeah, some people like, that, are, yeah, they just like, can't function ours, properly because of it. can affect our lives in simple ways. But some people, their ticks are so exploded all over the, their lives, you know, it's, it's like some people can't leave the house at all because of their tics or because of their, you know, their, their, their rituals. Or mm. something didn't go right in the morning and they just have to get it right, you know? They can't stop. They can't... They have to keep turning the light on and off. There's no set amount of time they do it. It's only until mm-hmm. they feel it's right. Exactly. And that could take hours. It could take all day. Or when they're washing their hands and they don't think it's clean enough and they could actually physically hurt themselves because they're washing their hands. Mm. So, it's yeah, we've made clean, it depressing. Right? I also like to put my DVDs in a certain order as well. What order? Is it by genre? <laughs> no, no, not even that. Just the jo- oh, actually, no, yeah, the genre, like um, genre of film. The different different actors, um, but the actors of films like Clint Eastwood and Bruce Lee's are all, all in a section. But then when I get through the actors, I like to put them in all the all the nonconformists can go in their own order, like alphabetical or or something like that, you know. But that seems like a jumbled mess to me. It, it, well, yeah, it's it's that's the thing about OCD. 
there's, there's, there's method in the madness to the person that's doing I'd, it. I'd but... hate being in your house and looking at that. Oh, you, yeah, you'd I'd hate being in my house anyway. Yeah. Tom, him, Tom, him, we hate you. Fuck you. <laughs> Matt, I've been in your room <laughs> when you were at uni, and I saw the DVDs, and I just... I wanted to hyperventilate. They were just piled up in stacks of no oh. order, no nothing. How do you know they weren't in order? Thank you. Because I looked at them. They weren't in the right order. I don't know if they were in an order. They weren't in the right order. There was some order to it. Not really. Yeah, I tended to put the films that were by the same director together. Yeah, but that's not an A to Z. Oh, do you want to hear something? Like everything, to everything has to be an A to Z. That's my no, thing. Everything has to be an A to Z. Everything. Like, even when I'm at work. Because I've been working at a different place lately in my company place. We don't mention what it is. My company place. <laughs> but then I go back to my regular office and people have been in it and been working in it. And I like to keep my work, paperwork in A to Z. And then I go in and it's not in A to Z. And I spend like half the day really pissed off putting it in A to Z before I can actually do any work. You're... And I get so frustrated and I start yelling at people. And yeah, it's, 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 it's painful. You're, you're a boss's dream. You know that? I already know that. I, you want to know what the sad thing about my work is? It's like, I know I'm never going to get fired, so I can only leave when I want to leave. <laughs> and sometimes I'm just hoping that they'll fire me. No, you when don't I've understand. had a really bad day. When you I've must had a really bad me. day. <laughs> yeah, when I've, when I've had a really bad day, I'm just like, I just wish they'd fire me, because, like, yeah, that would just, like, make me leave. <laughs> like, yeah. There's no going back if they fire me. And you know, everyone has those really shit days when they just don't want to be there and they just don't know why they're there. Oh, yeah. And But, like, I just... And then it's surprising that I know that I'm always going to have that job, no matter what. You just... you just. I could completely fuck up everything in one day, but no, nothing will happen. Because it's me. They love me too much. Yeah. I've been called the <laughs> golden-eyed boy at work. Because man- you were running around after customers. I saw you yesterday, uh, but my, I left you to it for a while. My, my mantra is just don't shit where you eat and just work hard, right? Just mm-hmm. get on with your job, get your task done. That's fine. And when, when you got that, and as long as you keep yourself out of the dramas, there's nothing no one can say. But because I do that, they give me more lion's share of tasks. So Exactly, that's I, the same with me. I've got the rule of the newbies, and I'm teaching people now, but at the same time, it's like... You only just started, I, and you're already training people. Uh, kind of, yeah. I'm showing them the ropes, because I'm the one that knows how to do the delivery system now. But I'm kind of like, maybe if I fuck up really badly, they'll take away some responsibility. I know, and, uh, right? That would be nice. I'm hoping <laughs> that happens to me, because like, someone's on a maternity leave, so I'm getting all of her jobs to do. Yeah. And then I'm just like, I don't really want to do this, so if I just do it really badly... Yeah. And they I, won't I make me like, do it again. Yeah, like you think, like, maybe if I just, you know... Uh, accidentally start a fire on one of these boxes <laughs> and 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 then maybe they'll be like how did that happen i'll be like i i don't know i looked at it the wrong way oh and i had this match as well and i'll be like well okay you know that's maybe that's awesome uh, mate you'd get arrested again yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we busted just cut you out the middle once. man I don't think we can do oh, it no, again. No, you, you won't get less responsibility you know you will negate all responsibility there mate <laughs> um do you think that's guy fawkes's excuse yeah, you wanted less responsibility. <laughs> oh, yeah. look, look, mate, I'm, I'm just working in Parliament, right? And the more I try to help you out, the more you keep piling shit upon me, you know? So uh, I try to set one smoke alarm off, and it, you caught me for arson, for trying to blow up Parliament. What's going on? Yeah, I didn't know that's how they spake in the 1600s. Well, a little bit of a... I didn't know ad, they had smoke, ad, alar- smoke alarms. Oh, yeah, <laughs> didn't you know 1600. that? 1600. It's a bloke yeah, on a ladder, and he smells smoke. And he starts, fire. you know, yelling, fire, fire. You know, they had about 50 of those for one big room in Parliament, you know. You know just, what, they'd probably yeah. be more accurate than the alarms, because my alarm seems to go off whenever it feels like it sometimes. Yeah, like, you ever, you know, back back before uh, the invention of uh, electronics, fire alarms were just people on ladders in Victorian England, and that was their <laughs> job all day and out. You know, so they get a housemaid to pass them up a tray of biscuits and milk every now and then, but... Uh, most of the time, they just had a really good keen sense of smell. Oh, so did Philip teach you this in prison, then? Oh, yeah, yeah. We weren't smelling for fires, though. We weren't smelling for fires. Although a lot of us were flaming. <laughs> uh. <laughs> well, the friction, that causes fire, doesn't it? <laughs> oh, don't remind me. Yeah, yeah. yeah I've realised I probably shouldn't shout fire, because I'm someone who lives here might think there's a fire. <laughs> so that's kind of... <laughs> Oh, I'm home alone, so I'm good. I can shout fire all I want. <laughs> Tell him to home alone, like that film. 
<laughs> oh, if only someone tried to break into the house. We'll get someone to do, I'll pay someone to do that. Yeah, but I don't think I'd defend it as well. But the thing is, I like my stuff. This goes back to the OCD thing. He'd probably try and touch my stuff, wouldn't he? Well, you know, so, yeah. so before he touches my stuff, I would actually make him kill me so I wouldn't have to watch <laughs> or have to live with it, him no. touching my stuff. Because I've actually had this thought before. What if someone did try and steal something from me? I said, like, if it's my phone or my laptop or anything, I'm just, I'm, I would never actually let that go. I know that knowing uh. my mentality, I know you're supposed to hand it over, but I probably wouldn't. So I'd end uh. up dying. <laughs> Yeah, go out. And so I'm, I'm so way. glad that I have never been mugged before. I'm the only person I know that hasn't been mugged. I know uh, if you if someone came into your room right now and they were like, "Give me that computer," if, you know, the probably the best thing you could do is try and hit them with the computer because at least if it breaks, there's no point anymore. And then um, you know, no, like, no, if, I'd, if, I'd actually say over my dead body and stand in front of the computer yeah. so he'd have to kill me or and take it or just go. So if he had the balls to kill me, fine. I might as well let him because he's going to take it anyway and there's no point of life if my stuff is gone. Yeah. I like my stuff. That's yeah. another thing. If people touch my stuff, I have cried before. I've done it time and time again when I realise people have moved stuff around. Oh, like yeah. When Annie moved in, when Annie moved into my house, Lana was helping her move her stuff. Lana came into the room and started moving my candles around and just left. Because she knew it would piss me off. That is... Oh, she, she, no. knew it would, she knew it would piss me off. Oh, who's it, who did that? Lana? Yeah. <laughs> she came into my room, which is fine, fair enough, but then she moved stuff. <sighs> so she whenever really I go to evil, hers, I move her she? stuff. And she hates it, so yeah. Lana's so evil. She oh. is, because, like, so yeah. Evil. I genuinely have cried because people have moved my stuff. I had this old housemate who was terrible, and she came into my room once. Like, she did knock first, so I said, OK. And she came in, and then she started talking, and then she started moving over to my drawers. And, like, I keep my jewellery and stuff there. Mm. And she started touching it without asking me, and I really wanted to fucking punch her. Mm. But I couldn't punch her. I hate it when people just in, invite themselves to things, you know. Yeah. Like my sister does that as well. That's one of the things that drives me crazy. She just goes ahead and touches my stuff, and I'm just like, mm. why are you touching my stuff? I'm going to kill you. And just, like, she... keep loads of dildos on your counter, and if they come in, they start, <laughs> well, what, can they, what can they do? Like, oh, yeah, when my friend came in, it really pissed me off when he started just <clears throat> using the dildo right in front of me uh, while talking has... about the weather. My sister has touched my DVDs when I'm not at home before, and she's taken some. I'm so relieved you said that. I was going to say, touched my dildo. Yeah. I was like, I'm tuning out now. No, no, she's touched my... She's removed my DVDs from their shelf. Like I wouldn't notice, there's a break in the fucking dust line, for crying out loud. All right, you want to know something that really pisses me off? When someone uh, takes a DVD out of a machine that you had it in last. Because so, sometimes, yeah, you do leave the DVD in the machine. You want to you want to finish the film what later. What monster leaves the DVD in the machine? The one who cares enough to watch it later at a more forgiving time. You watch it once, and then you take it out and put it back, and then you put it back in the DVD again. This is madness, Chris. Madness. My point is, when they take it out, and just leave it there on the counter. Yeah. Or, 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 or shiny side down as well. Poor bastards. Yep, 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 yep. And, and not just that, but they'll, they'll, uh, they'll, they'll put multiples on top of each other. Ugh. Ugh. Yeah. Uh, I've, at I've least once... get the sleeve. Not, even if you don't have the case, at least get the sleeves, because we've got the... Yeah. Why yeah. would you... <sighs> my worst... Uh, one of my worst this moments is gonna, was This I, is emotional for me. I bought a, 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 a film from a charity shop once, because it was a Clint Eastwood film. I think it was called Time Time something. Not Time Cop, but uh, uh, I, I, something Time Detective or something like that. And I was looking forward to it, because I looked it up, Clint Eastwood's in it, and I thought, this could be great. Uh, opened it up, and I watched ten minutes of it. Turns out they'd put in the wrong film that was also called the same title, Time something, but it was like a TV, a daytime TV film you know those really cheaply made horror horror channel films yeah like tmc um, and stuff but it just happened to have the same name and this was infuriating because not just because of the mix-up but because i'd sat there for 20 minutes waiting for clint eastwood to enter the story <laughs> uh when he's clearly invisible on the cover and it just i i didn't know what i was i had to stop and look just to make sure because it just didn't seem like what something he'd be in and that, there you go. that's not even ocd that's just annoyance because what if you bought something it should be there uh, yeah but it drove my ocd crazy because obviously it fit the bill now your it's DVDs in there, are but, out of order though yeah oh oh 
Because, like, I've got hot fuzz, but I do not have the case for it. So it's in sleeves oh. in Shaun of the Dead. But then, obviously, that's not in the alphabetical order. It's really annoying. I'm, I am made the mistake of take. I had some sleeves that I took to uni once, my, my the, 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 the uni before Kingston. And um, I put a whole bunch of films in it. I came back uh, after I didn't really go through with it. And I had a, I come, some of them I put back in the DVD cases, some of them I didn't. Uh, so I, every now and then I'll open up a DVD case and it's not there. And it's maybe in a sleeve or that sleeve. And this kind of drives me crazy because I'm just disorganised in that regard. Yeah, I opened up my Pineapple Express DVD a few weeks ago. The DVD wasn't there. <clears throat> and look, I don't know why anyone like would trail? take it. I don't know why anyone would take it because it's a Region 1 DVD. So it doesn't even play on UK DVDs. DVD players. Mm. So why would someone steal the Pineapple Express DVD? I don't understand. People like that just want to watch the world burn. They exist like, like, I bet you that was my old housemate who was a bitch. Yeah. She, she touched my who stuff. She, who? No, no, you've never uh, met her. She you know. left um, my third year of uni, so you would never met her. I made sure she was outside the house whenever people came over. Oh. Because, she, yeah, she was just a fucking idiot. She's just genuinely an idiot. Like, if something was broken, she'd leave it. She wouldn't tell anyone. She'd just leave it. That's annoying. And I was like, how, you spe- how do you expect it to get fixed if you don't tell me? Since my father is a landlord who deals with the fixing of things. So I could get him to fucking fix it, you idiot. I'm so glad she moved out. <laughs> <laughs> but she moved out and left the room in a mess. And guess who had to clean that up? Your dad. Yeah. No, me. Oh, shit. Why my dad. No, well, I tidied it up. My dad cleaned it. I didn't clean it. I tidied it. <laughs> So she left half her stuff there, so I had to go and, like, scrap it, didn't I? But she just run off somewhere. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. Really? I guess that's how you do it. Well, she'd broken lots of stuff in the house, so she probably knew that she wasn't getting her security deposit back. No. She sounds a bit mental, if you ask me. No, she's just a fucking idiot, I think. She didn't well, know no, anything. She didn't seem all that smart. I hope she's listening. So do I. <laughs> so do I. Mm. I can't so- remember her name, though. I lived with <coughs> her for three years. I can't remember her name. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> shut up. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it's like um, if there's like a fire, you, apparently you're meant to get out straight away. I don't. Think but I'd, I'd be, be able to do I'd that. be like, fuck that. I'm saving some of my DVDs first. Exactly. I have so much stuff that would need to be saved because I don't know if I, I I don't know about the housing insurance here. I don't know if my stuff's covered under it. I don't deal with it. So I wouldn't be able to get it back, but I would, I'd basically, it'd be like the burglar thing. I'd probably die with my stuff. I'd go down mm. with the ship. Where I live, yeah, knowing where I live, I'll probably take my, my computer outside anyway, because me being me, I run back in for the other stuff, come back and someone's already taken it. Mm. You know what? I'd actually probably leave my laptop because my parents would likely buy me another one because I'd be crying so much, but they would not buy me my DVDs. The other day, my dad asked me why I have so many and why don't I get rid of them, and I just wanted to laugh in his fucking face. <laughs> so I'd probably save that. I don't know how to carry them all out, though. Yeah. Shit. You just tuck them straight out the window. There you go, yeah. Well, yeah, that's well. true. I have grass. I am overlooking the garden, so it would land on the grass. Yeah. So, yeah, that could work. That's that's the plan, yeah. Do it in your backyard, because yeah, that way... Yeah, but what about no one... everything else, though? Because I have a lot of stuff. Well, whatever goes out your window. Mm. Like, uh, you know, yeah. it'll be in your backyard, so it'll be safe from, like, strangers. And uh, you could set up a tent and continue watching the film you were watching before the fire started. <laughs> I have you know? nowhere to plug my cord into, my TV cord into. I need to save the TV as well. Yeah, before you save Annie, save, you know, Annie's probably dead. Chris, she's, yeah, she's Chris alive. Ofter. I, we think, yeah. allegedly. I was I was in a rage. I could, I, everything was blurry and red. I couldn't see much. But... Uh, <laughs> I think I saw her. That's probably what incriminated me when I confessed that. <laughs> to, to so be Chris fair, is going to head back to prison in a couple of weeks. To be no, fair, <laughs> Tom and Dibka... They'll never get me. <laughs> to be, to fair, be fair, I what? To be fair, Tom and killed her cleaner last week. I didn't kill did. her. I heard you. I heard you say you were going to kill her. No, I didn't. I just you said did. I wish you'd hurry up and go. <laughs> she was making evidence, a lot of noise. Evidence. I, I haven't heard from her since, so... Neither you, have I, because she hasn't been in since. Exactly. She's Same on holiday. Has happened. She's yeah, on holiday. Yeah. On holiday under the ground, is she talking? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, Matt, Matt, I-, I love that you think I'm into manual labour and I can actually bury a body. 
yeah, I wouldn't take that. You think past I'd do you. it personally? You think I'd manage to dig a hole and put someone oh, in you, there and bury you'd them? You'd pay someone to do it, would you? I'd get caught after committing a murder purely because I'm lazy. Sure, I'd know how to get rid of the body, but I'd just feel like, fuck Jesus, it, I can't she, be bothered she's to do She's still that. hanging around in your house somewhere. <laughs> and the Jesus. cupboard's on the stairs, mate. Sure, I'm not going around to your house again. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. That's right. Yeah, when you came round to my house, you just stayed in one spot as well. You didn't move. Oh, I did you literally just stayed once. in one spot. Spot. Well, I went, went upstairs twice. Yeah, that was. Oh yeah, you used the toilet, didn't you? Yeah, I didn't go in anyone's bedroom. So you better not have. I didn't. <laughs> you the one that took my. You took the Pineapple Express DVD. <laughs> no. You no. son of a fucking bitch! I'm gonna kill you. I was just installing my uh, security cameras. <laughs> I'm waving at you now. Literally, because yeah. you're sitting next to me, I forgot. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I can see your hand moving. Yeah, because <laughs> it's right in front of your fucking face. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's creating a draft. <laughs> you can hear it, can't you? Yeah. That that's noise. Not, yeah, that's not the angry wind at all. No. No. Oh, I love the way your hair flutters in that breeze. <laughs> I know. Are we recording outside or something? <laughs> <laughs> it's quite it's quite an erotic image, isn't it? Oh yeah. My hair fluttering. Have why, you seen why, how long we've been naked? recording why for? I thought this was like gonna be like the shortest episode ever. <laughs> oh well, you know O C D, you know we're gonna have to do it a second time as well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like. That's probably why we carried on, because we were just like, we're not at the forty minute mark yet. Otherwise we we're gonna stop. be unlucky. <laughs> We're going to be unlucky for the rest of the evening. Marked. Yeah. So, uh, Matt, you seriously don't have anything? Any, any, the only thing any I get a bit ritualistic about, and Tom knows a little bit about this, is restaurants. Ah. Oh. I did. And when I was at university, I would go to the same place literally well, you, every No, Sunday. no, you say they're restaurants, Matt, but they're not. Well, yeah, kebab places, then. <laughs> yeah, I remember that one you took me to, and you said, I come here every Sunday. I was like, really? Come here every Sunday? I know. And I'd go to same fish and chip shop every Friday. <laughs> and I'd go to Spuds pretty much every day of the week. Oh, oh yes, think, Spuds. I don't think that's OCD. I think that's just good taste. Yeah, like, if yeah, you know exactly. that you like eating at a place, you'll go to that place. Yeah. And plus, they were nice people as well. I mean, you spent money. I mean, Luigi liked me. And oh, that, yeah, Luigi said I, that you could live above the calf. Yeah. Unfortunately, that never happened. Yeah, you should. No, but then your main problem was the accommodation. If you took him yeah. up on the offer, you could have carried on with uni. Could have done, yeah. Luigi oh. could have saved you. I know. He he loved me enough that he he once arse raped me in a dream. <laughs> <laughs> he loved us enough that we didn't have to order. He just told us to go sit down. Yeah. And then he always brought it over. Perfect. I couldn't tell if he recognised us or not. The last I think time he did because he looked at us a bit weird and then he yeah. said, go and sit down. So I think he recognised us, but he didn't want to say anything or he wasn't 100% sure. Yeah. But they've cleaned the place up. It does look, it looks quite nice now, doesn't it? It looks, not, it looks like a place that you'd actually eat now, whereas before it didn't. Well, I still used to eat there all the time. Yeah, I know, we still Even used to eat there all the time, but it looked like a place that you wouldn't eat in. <laughs> it looked horrible. I thought it was all right. <laughs> no, no, it looked horrible. Nah. The plastic chairs, it looked like cafeteria and it was so greasy. Everything was dirty. Anyway, this not about spuds. <laughs> Why not? I want it to be about spuds. You always want it to be about spuds. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, so anyone else got any more OCD things then? I've got plenty. Like, that barely even scratched the surface. Awesome. Like my my ritual for walk, going out of the house in the morning, oh my God. I have to wake up like half an hour earlier just so I can have time to do that. Because I, because I start every, I turn everything on in the morning. I'm watching TV or my laptop or putting music on or whatever. So everything's plugged in. I shower. It all actually depends on where I'm working as well. Because sometimes I get up at quarter past six, go for a shower, and all that bullshit. But then when it comes to leaving, it's so difficult because I unplug everything and I close all my windows because I open the windows in the morning to let the air in because they're going to be closed all day, and then. I go to the toilet, close the window, go to the bathroom, close the window, then come back in and then double check everything's unplugged. Uh, I mean, come back into my bedroom, double check everything's unplugged, all the windows are closed, go out again, go downstairs, and then sometimes I'll come back up into my room and double check everything, well, triple check everything again. And it could go on for a while. 
And then actually locking the front door as well. I'll lock it and then I'll still stand there for a few, like a couple of minutes, just playing with the handle, just to oh, make yeah. sure it's locked. You and sometimes I have gone down the road and decided to come back and do all that again. As, as, as invasive as that OCD is, one thing I can say about it is that at least it has a progressive nature to it. At least, you know, you, you're making security-wise checks. Yeah. Like, yeah. It's not but, like... Uh, it's not the other extreme, the really bad uh, No, no, side, but it's the is, mental um, stuff as well, because if I yeah. don't do that, if I'm running late and I don't do that, then it grates at me all day, yeah. whether I did everything. Yeah, that's, So that's, I, that's... I was running late the other day, so I texted Annie, because, like, it got to about half seven, and I was like, fuck it, no, I haven't done this, I haven't done this, I haven't done this, I'm going to start a fire, or whatever, or I'm going to ruin something, or I've forgotten something, and someone's going to break into my house through my window. So I texted Annie to uh, get her to double-check everything for me instead. Yeah. Which, of course, she didn't respond to, because Chris killed her. Exactly. Yes. So Chris, and... Chris, I was in anguish all day because you killed her. Uh, well, I was in anguish because I couldn't do it twice. <laughs> <laughs> Can um, see the statistic? <laughs> not, 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 to, not to Annie. I'm just like OCD wise, you know. Uh, yeah, all of these OCDs, I always think one of the worst OCDs that some people can have is a uh, extreme hoarding that you, has actually taken quite a, uh, a bit of public limelight recently. Yeah, Matt does that with his DVDs, I've seen. Matt, yeah. you also collected cans of drinks. That like was... when like when I went into your room, like drinks. every surface was full of cans. Just empty cans. Yeah, shut up, Tommy. You know, you don't need to know about that. <laughs> but but this is the O C D episode yeah, and you collected up, cans. Up, empty cans for no shut reason. <laughs> okay, so not. he's not gonna elaborate on that. <laughs> no, I'm not. <laughs> That, was, that wasn't collecting for, like, <laughs> collecting sake. <laughs> so I haven't got uh, around to emptying them yet. <laughs> <laughs> All those cans. There must... There was more than... There was dozens of them. <laughs> they were just everywhere. It was that and DVDs. Yes, I couldn't see any of the floor. Coke and DVDs are my two favourite things. You know that. About me. <laughs> <laughs> that is true, everybody. He loves the Coke. Mm, I do. <laughs> I find it hard to throw simple little things away sometimes, like Pokemon cards or, uh, you know, even stuff I'm That's never going to use sense. again. That's just throws Pokemon cards away. My mother. <laughs> but bitch. common shit, like energy, <laughs> energy cards. But um, just small things, like a, a, a pencil top I probably got from a, a cereal packet back in the 90s. I can't throw it away because it's just, it's got history now and stuff like that. And that's like mild... I hope mild forms of, uh, what do you call it, hoarding. Yeah, I used to do that because I always had the idea in my head that I'll use it sometime, I'll use it sometime, yeah. I'll use it sometime. But I, the, late, recently I just had to get rid of everything because I needed more space because I wanted to get more stuff. I think the biggest gripe was I want to get rid of it, but I don't want to get rid of it for free. <laughs> so I, I always think oh, that will be, be on the eBay pile. Yeah, um, that's another thing. No, no, no. Yeah, my eBay pal. Because um, I have so many clothes and shoes yeah. and everything, and, and I, I never throw anything away. And I never I, want to give they it have to be sold. Years. Yeah, exactly. I, I but, want to make some money out of it, otherwise but, I feel like I'm losing out. Yeah, but I, have n- I don't get round to selling it. So I have, like, two garbage bags full... F- garbage bags full of clothes and shoes that I've had and it's been I've been collecting them over the course of the course of a couple of years that I just still haven't sold I'll go mm. through bursts of selling and then I won't do it for about six months so oh. I've still got all the stuff it's just there and I know I'm never going to use it again until like I get to that point where I literally have to get rid of it and my dad takes it to the charity shop for me because I can't do it oh. so I give it to my dad and I say like, do with it what you will <laughs> It's like, just, just take it away from here. Oh, oh shit. See, I'm a bit like that, because my, my dad, he had a lot of, like, ornaments and stuff mm. like that. Like, I, I kept lo- loading them for a while, and I thought, I've just got to get rid of these, because I, mean, I don't do much with them. Mm. They're just kind of, they're pretty useless at the end of the day. And the mm. only reason I kept them was for, like, sentimentality kind of sake. Yeah, that makes so, sense. It's not hoarding, that's sentiment. Yeah. yeah, my dad was a bit of a hoarder. Like, he would like he'd keep newspaper cuttings for some reason. <laughs> Maybe he liked the story or the way it was written or the author. Yeah, well, like, he kept a lot of newspaper cutting of a story about this bigamist. And I've got no clue why. Maybe he idolised the bigamist. <laughs> yeah, maybe he liked the bigamist. <laughs> maybe my dad had a wife that I... I don't know about. And maybe the news- other newspaper cuttings were written by his other family, like he has other kids. Yeah. 
I mean, obviously... Your wife... dad is an adventurous man. He's a yeah. mason, bigamist. I know. I mean, obviously, the wife I, I knew about was my mother. I didn't know about <laughs> that one. It was another wife, possibly. But, yeah, he, he, he used to do a bit like what you did um, with, like, um, books and videos, old, old VHS tapes back then. He used to have, like, he used to have a notebook where he'd written everything down. Right? Uh, Every the time book. before spreadsheets. I don't think I'd be able to live. Well, he, he used to be, like, an insurance man, so he kind of got into, like, you, where you have, to, you have to write everything down mm. in those days. So that's where he got that from. He was, like, super organised, completely different to me. I haven't inherit, inherited that side of him. But I have inherited his collecting side, though. But I think I think everyone just collect. It's just to some yeah. degree. Yeah. It's uh, one person calls it a collection. To some others, it might seem like a hoard of things. You know, it's a subjective thing. But there is a certain line for everyone's collection. Like you see a guy who has a Star Wars collection and it rules his whole house. But if he has it all organised and on show, like a museum or something, you can still call it a collection, couldn't you? I mean, yeah, it's not a hoard that makes it hard to live in. Or you it's, know. It's, but I think hoard is different because they just collect anything and everything. Yeah, like Whereas the we newspapers collect specific and, things. Yeah. Whereas hoarders, they'll see something and they'll just take it in, and it just fills the house. The house explodes because they just collect everything they see. Yeah. Whereas I collect DVDs and books and like little stupid ornaments and things like that. So here, at least... Clothes. At least books and DVDs, you can use them. Yeah, no, there is some use to them. It's not like we're taking them for the sake of having them as a possession. Like, yeah, it is for me. I like having them as a possession, but I do watch them or read them and touch them and feel mm. them. I, like, Whereas, I, prefer, yeah. I prefer the material than the, the bloody tablets and... and no, I, actually, you know what? The tablet isn't really good, though, because... I don't have a lot of room, as you, as I've told that's, you. My bookshelf is taken up. That's the benefit, yeah. Yeah, my bookshelf has been taken up of the DVD, so I'm actually getting another one, which is why I had to make the room. Mm -hmm. So when I get the other one, I can buy the other books that I'm going to make you buy me. That's what I was spending an hour in Waterstones doing yesterday <laughs> before I actually went to find you. There but was as a... of right now, the tablet is actually really good because I have so many books on there. There's a bloke who came read. in who uh, he, apparently he has a, muse, a, a sort of library in his house. Um, and he, he's trying to get rid of books, so he said for he's come to a, a conclusion this year for every uh, 20 books he gets rid of, he's allowing himself to buy one book. And I thought, why doesn't he just keep one out of the 20? That's what I wondered. But then I looked at his pile and it said, Jesus Christ, you bought six books, you know, like, like how many do you have in your house? You know, like, Jesus. But, um, yeah, like, some people will hoard this stuff and not... I, I remember when, um, when Goosebumps was a thing back as a kid. Oh, I had loads I of those books. I would hoard the shit out of those books because they were like trading cards in book form. <laughs> and I would, I would buy these books. Some of them I didn't even read. I was just like, now nah, I've got this one, you know. Mine oh. just wasn't... It wasn't just Goosebumps. I liked Point Horror books. Ah, oh, Point Horror. Yes. I loved the teen books when I was a pre-teen. Not even when I was a teen, when I was a pre-teen. There was something kind of just... Just like horror as a genre, like sometimes you get a really dark tale, and you'd be like, "Yes, okay, this is going to keep me up." So, actually, I had a heartbreaking moment though because I had the, I usually used to have the books by my bed. Mm. One day I was one night I was sick and I threw up, On the books. and obviously I leaned over oh. onto the pile of books, so I I had to throw them away, and then oh. I was crying. So my mum tried to salvage some of them, but she couldn't. Oh. Well, she salvaged, I think she salvaged a couple, but then the rest we had to bin. That's a shame. Yeah. Oh, that's dirty, Tom. It's okay. not my fault I was sick. <laughs> <laughs> so if I knew I was going to be sick, I'd move the books and put a fucking bin there, you idiot. Still, you could have moved a bit further. No, <laughs> because when you're puking and it's coming out, it's coming out. I got it on my pillow and stuff as well. What were you puking over? I don't know. I guess I must... I guess this was, like, this was like 10 years ago, Chris. I can't yeah. remember why I was puking. All I know is I was uh, puking. The vodka, then. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, at 13, I was down in vodka. Just, yeah, you should have just closed your mouth, Tarman. <laughs> that would have worked. It's, it's like projectile vomiting. You can't just close your mouth. It just comes out. I'm a Come out your no, ears. No, you can't. Do you not puke? Have you never puked before? Close your mouth, like... Tarvin. That's all I'm saying. No, because they all come out. It's like projectile vomiting and it's like so much of it. You can't contain it. Have you ever tried to sneeze with your eyes open? Yeah, and then you get all the white spots. Well, no. What? what? You know, you see white spots because uh, you sneezed. 
I didn't do it because it was too fucking hard. It's too it hurts. I think I did it once and I saw like lines. And I thought never doing that again because I want to. No, I get I get the white spots. Shit. It's, I, it's... I heard the story about someone put a, a skittles up their nose and it started coming out of their eye. That's bits of their eye socket started just kind of falling off. <laughs> That's that's fucking weird, man. Nice, <laughs> nice. No, nice is weird. Imagine if it got stuck there and it was just like a skittle lump <laughs> losing all its sugar in yeah. the eye. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> nice. I, I did, see. I'm I'm collecting um, Agatha Christie books, but she like wrote over like hundred books, I think. Yeah. So I've got to save a lot of space for that. I've already got loads already. Can't can't you just get like box collections? Wouldn't that end up being cheaper? There's not many, like, box collections, though. There must they're, be some, like, specific to, like, genres or whatever. Well, actually, no, it's going to be the one genre, isn't it? It'd probably be it's specially not, ordered as well. She, she, st- she still wrote, like, over 100, kind of, mm. odd books. So, I mean... Oh, so you're done with Henning Mankell, then? No, I'm collecting You've got them all his. as well. No, not yet. I've still got some of his to get. Mm. But I've been collecting Ag- Agatha Christie books for a while, so... So, so for Christmas, Chris is just going to give you a Waterstones gift card. Yeah, <laughs> you can do if you want. That's probably like the best thing you could get him at this point if he's collecting Ag- Agatha Christie and Henry yeah. Mankell books. Yeah, yeah. I just collect fine. books in I general. Did, so. We do have a special section in the crime section. There's a table. I was. Mm. I spent about half an hour in the crime section mm. yesterday. Uh, did you see True Crime though? You might have yeah. missed that one. No, no, I was. I, I was in that shop for yeah. an hour before I actually looked for you. Uh, oh so nice. I texted you, yeah, just buy me whenever. I was just <laughs> writing down names of books that I was going to get. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, until I... Fa- and then I got tired and I found you at about seven I'm so, uh, before I wanted to go home. Yeah. So, yeah. You can get lost in that place. You can. I yeah. can barely find my way out. <laughs> there were, like, shelves everywhere. It's, it was yeah. beautiful. It's, it's beautiful. It is still beautiful for me, even for me as well. Um, yeah. There's something nice about it, but mm. yeah, I, I'm just glad it doesn't have fucking Christmas music playing right oh, now. Oh yeah, it's so quiet. It's like a library. It's really nice. It's like they a should library. have more seating areas as well. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, but yeah. But then the people just never leave. Well, yeah, that's a big problem sometimes. Sometimes you'll tell a person, "Oh, just just to let you know, sir, we're closing in three minutes," and they're like, "Oh, okay then." But five minutes later, they're still there, and you think to yourself, "The fuck? I told this person what the." And you go back and you say, oh, we're just closing up now, sir. And they're like, yes, yes, okay. And they get up. And they take another three minutes. And you're like, what were you thinking? What's wrong with you? Like, oh, you stupid person. Oh, why are you? Sometimes you think they're just doing it. Anyway, back to, back to uh, <laughs> enough of that. Enough of that silly poo. Um, yeah, <laughs> Christmas music. I don't think there's uh, much more we could say about the OCD thing. Well, I'm now part of a job where OCD is kind of a benefit to me. So I'm finishing on a light note here. Making sure books are tidy is kind of a zen. Yeah, that's true. That is true. Like, having mild OCD so, just make mm. me better at working. It doesn't matter what work I'm doing, but working in general. So I think it's a good thing to say that certain amounts of OCD don't have to necessarily be a curse in someone's life. Sometimes they can actually help you more, be more focused. And, and more efficient. And more efficient. So for anyone listening out there, don't think that you suffer alone and don't think for a minute that your OCD is something that's going to stop you in life. Sometimes it might actually be the thing that helps you get that next promotion. or Yeah, like or could be the thing that turns you into a hermit hoarder. That as well. So, there's so a, it's, the, it's, you know... You have to know good, when good to and stop. Bad. <laughs> yeah. You know, there's people that like, collect their own fingernails and stuff like that. And I wouldn't be surprised are, about that. urine and stuff like that as well. Oh, yeah. Matt, is this your OCD? Fuck off. Fuck off. Fuck off. <laughs> He's come out. Is this why you've been us. silent all episode? <laughs> Shut up. Oh, pair of you. <laughs> this is why we're never invited round, Chris. Oh, I went to Leicester. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's not the reason why you don't come down. Because <laughs> you've got jars of urine everywhere. I just, I just love after the pep talk about the OCD, it's like, yeah, yeah, you know what, guys? Yeah, I collect fingernails. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's an experiment. I'm just waiting to see what happens to it. Yeah. <laughs> <sighs> um, I, we're saying bye now, guys. I think that's a good way to wrap it up. Yeah, let's say bye. <laughs> toodle pip, toodle pip. Good day to you all. Fuckers.
Good day to you all, fuckers. <laughs> You're so impolite. This is what I've had to put up with, Chris, while you've right. been away. <laughs> Are you going to start recording now? <laughs> yeah. All right. Bye-bye. Let me stop recording. You what? Let Bye-bye. Me.